My name is Laura Ostrowski, as Rachel mentioned, and I am an adult education program specialist with the Maryland Department of Labor. Prior to joining Maryland Labor, I served in adult education for 10 years, first as an ABEGAD instructor, and then as an advisor assessor with the National External Diploma Program. I had the pleasure of designing this presentation alongside my colleague and fellow adult education program specialist, Echo Salisbury, pictured here, but un unfortunately she is unable to join today. Her background is in K through 12 education and she is Montessori certified. So thank you very much, Rachel, for having us and thanks everyone for joining today. Okay, so what I wanted to begin with was uh, some information about the definition of, of, of really how we approached um, defining not just the digital literacy framework modules, learning modules, but backing it up even a step further to talk about the digital literacy framework itself. Um, and so during our time today, um, just walking through that overall development, production, and delivery of this latest appendage to our Maryland digital literacy framework for adult learners, uh, the digital literacy framework learning modules, to propel us into the future, we'll, we'll kind of take a running start a little bit through the past formation of our history with the digital literacy framework in Maryland. Our motivation for the creation of these learning modules rests in our instructional practices utilizing the framework itself. So in fact, some of the slides of this deck, the one you're, you're seeing, for example, reflect images and definitions um, that appear within the modules themselves. Um, and when President Obama signed a previous iteration of the Museum and Library Services Act in 2010, from which the quote is, is and the definition of lit digital literacy skills is derived, the act clearly recognized how libraries and museums contribute to a competitive workforce and engaged citizenry, a new language at that time focused on the development of essential 21st century skills. So answering that question about you know, the importance of digital literacy, you know, I think at this point in time, we, we are preparing ourselves for an ever-changing 21st century economy and labor market, and we recognize digital literacy's importance in career development and growth and civic responsibility and personal well-being. Um, to this end, I would also add that in response to the U.S. Department of Commerce and TIA BEAD program, as um, Jisoo referenced uh, and Jessica, it is uh, it's coordination with the Digital Equity Act that, that are designed to ensure that all individuals and communities have the tools they need to recap uh, and reap the full benefits of our digital economy. Um, we note that adult education has an essential role to play in equitable training and workforce development. So again, just referencing the framework, we, we utilized a lot of resources um, currently in existence at the time to help us to frame and shape out the digital, the Maryland digital literacy framework um, after, and some of the resources are here pictured, um, you know, such as the WIOA, NRS, CCRS, and the Survey of Adult Skills. Um, these tools and resources we utilize to construct our own framework. Um, so at the conclusion, oh, I'm sorry, now I went forward too far. Let me try to back up. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Um, after synthesizing the additional resources, um, the Maryland framework herein rests on the following interconnected seven elements, skills and traits for digital consciousness and competence. These seven elements displayed in this um, pie format um, really show the interconnection uh, and just general multi-use of technical skills and traits. We refer to them as elements, technical element, civic element, communicative, collaborative, computational thinking, investigative, and productive. We wanted to ensure that we capture the vibrancy and the relevance of each of these elements in our design of the individual learning modules within the, within the digital literacy framework learning modules as an essential tool to provide the professional development necessary for strong adult education um, backbone structures in our technological world and for not just you know our adult learners but also those who instruct and support our adult learners 
And so diving just a, a brief moment into um, some of the aspects of the digital literacy framework, some of the actual um, elements themselves. I just wanted to talk briefly about the ways in which they appear in the learning modules. The technical element, for example, discusses powering devices, using devices and navigating the internet, the civic element, positions, ethics, values, and online engagement in life, work, and academia, including accessing applications safely and responsibly. Moving ahead, we can show that the communicative and collaborative element um, in a little bit more detail, we're gonna see what they look like in terms of the digital literacy um, framework learning modules, but they, uh, for example, the communicative element ensuring that communication in digital environments uh, considers audience, tone, and purpose, as well as the collaborative element, including the benefits of digital collaboration and working together, sharing ideas and setting goals and expectations as a team. Uh, moving on, the computational thinking uh, and investigative elements are shown here. Um, computational thinking defined in four parts as abstraction algorithms, decomposition and pattern recognition, and the investigative element spotlighting critical thinking and critical decomposition in the evaluation process when interacting with media. And finally, the productive element um, when utilized within the learning modules, uh, we're speaking about discerning between creation and curation and the steps to an effective, productive process, all of which, again, are just going to be so, so crucial as we move forward and begin to support um, adult learners within their workspaces. Um, looking ahead to the next bit of information we have, just trying to advance the slide here. Okay, so that brings us up to a little bit of, again, that running start launch pad into why did we, you know, want to take the next step? Why did we want to leverage those learning modules and, or excuse me, the digital literacy framework for adult learners in Maryland and create learning modules from that resource? Um, our plan was to offer a free on-demand training and the digital literacy framework learning modules portably guide learners, instructors, and staff through these contextualized components of each of the seven elements. So the learning modules deliver strategies for integrating technology across multiple modalities uh, for all learners to grow personally and professionally um, into adaptable, agile di digital citizens. That was, the, that was the focus of taking the digital literacy framework for Maryland adult learners and transforming it into, um, and really, like I said, another appendage for um, the application of the framework. So what did the creation process look like? Um, certainly it was like most creation processes, not an overnight venture um, and certainly not done in a vacuum. We wanted to ensure that we had uh, stakeholders from across a variety of um, aspects of the adult learning landscape in Maryland. So in early 2021, probably January, February, our team formed learning modules work groups, which consisted of adult education program managers, instructional specialists, instructors, and staff. Um, around spring of 21, the work groups created the scripts, the, the what would then become the, the audio components of the, the learning modules, uh, informed by peer-reviewed research and other online resources. In the summer of 21, uh, we developed and, and organized the content that would be a part of the audio, video, and interactive components of the learning modules. And then by spring and summer of 22, um, we produced all of this content, the audio and video married together um, in the, we utilized Thinkific as our learning platform. Um, so what's displayed here on the right is just a, just a sample kind of schematic of how we devised 
um, the flow of the courses. We uh, attempted to keep and feel that we've done that with Fidelity, um, the, the, the structure and the system of each course uniform from one element to the next. So interacting um, seamlessly and again on demand would become a very, um, very streamlined process. So it's at this time that I did want to share a little demo of the learning modules within our Maryland adult education um, framework on Thinkific. I think um, we're going to put the HTTP link into the chat because, again, these modules are open, they're free, they're available on demand. So feel free to go ahead and create a free account and, and play away. Um, so I do want to, again, just go into one element really briefly. I don't want to overstep time, but because we could talk about this for a long time. But um, the way that we've structured our landing page currently is that we have a bundle. We have a way to access each element, each module individually for our digital literacy framework. Um, this way we can pop in and out as, as necessary as educators, as staff. Um, so I'll just jump into the investigative element just as a, as a reference point. Um, the landing page for the course itself is pretty uh, nicely laid out. And I think I can just refer to this for a moment on the course curriculum uh, portion of the page. There's, this is replicated for each element, a welcome to the course, which walks you through Thinkific, defining digital literacy, where you're going to see again that that digital literacy skills definition card along with a voiceover. Um, and each element consists of its own course objectives, its own introduction, uh, its own quizzes and ways to interact. Some are true false questions, some multiple choice, just a way again to formatively assess the information that you're uh, receiving. And uh, each course has its own core and key components followed by a conclusion which uh, allows you to make connections to other elements, to summarize what was presented, but also to uh, participate in an evaluative survey to help fuel uh, future corrections or connections um, going forward. So just to jump into the course for a moment, just to show you kind of what it looks like from a student, from a learner perspective. By around this online course. What you're looking at here is the course player. Yours might look a little different than mine here. Your instructor has probably customized this to make sure that you have the best learning experience. On the left here, you can see all the lessons in this course. So there's an intro video that walks you through the course, the beginning of the course and how to navigate within Thinkific. And the left panel really helps you to jump from section to section without really needing to um, necessarily go linearly that's not that's not necessary you can you can jump in and out of various sections but just to show some of the development of the process um, i'll just jump into one of the sections for a moment and show you how the videos whether you ace the quiz or found that you need to strengthen your investigative approach let's take a look at what the experts say we will also be introduced to amrith who is hoping to increase his investigative skills with the wide variety of content on the internet, the quality of learning is affected by the quality of the content that is ultimately found to be acceptable. The more discerning that Amrith is, the better the influence of the content on his learning. The evaluation process has found a profound effect on what reading material is selected. Reading on the internet is a more complex process than reading in a book or magazine. According to research, Understanding the process for searching for information leads to obtaining quality information. Have a clearly defined search area with appropriate keywords. Determine the authority of the source. Assess the source from an objective, reliable site. Scan the information to determine if it is current and valuable. Determine if the premise of the article holds throughout the article without bias and Deem if there is adequate coverage of the topic after a review of the content or information. Getting a better understanding of what the experts say is great, but let's see what happens when we put the concepts into practice with real life examples. Whether you ace the quiz or found that you need to strengthen your investigative approach, let's take a look at what
Okay, just to pause there for a moment, um, because again, you can replay the video as many times as you'd like. You can move on and, and click in and out seamlessly throughout the um, module. Um, and as the voiceover reference, there's quizzes that help to check your knowledge throughout. Um, we wanted to keep in mind the accessibility feature. So ensuring that as much of the information that's read out um, auditorially was also printed on each video slide. So just going back to the presentation now for a moment. Um, that's the demo of, of Thinkific. Um, what we did though in our in our sort of rollout and our unveiling of this was we didn't you know move everything forth at once. Um, we took one module at a time. It happened to be the computational thinking element and presented it. I think this was around October, September. I think it coincided with AEFL week 2022. Rolled that out to um, instructional specialists and an instructional specialist community of practice to allow folks to then jump in to allow our instructor, instructional specialists to jump in and see how did that one module look in sort of a bite-sized component? What feedback might be generated from just looking at that one module before sharing it across the board with all instructors from our instructional specialists in that feedback session, which happened later on in the fall of 22. We did get some really quality um, information that we wanted to then incorporate into um, into our Thinkific practice. So things like the direct connection to the framework, um, ensuring that there are, are those direct linkages, um, and then in requests for additional implementation guidance. That then allowed us to replicate any changes across all of the modules in order to standardize for a full-scale dissemination early 2023 that happened, I think it was January of 2023. So we were, again, just really thrilled to have the input from a variety of stakeholders across adult ed in Maryland to really make this a rich, rich experience. So where are we now uh, and what are some of the lesson learns and what do we look forward to in the future in terms of our digital literacy framework learning modules? Um, we did learn uh, that there are some accessibility challenges despite our, our greatest efforts. Um, we just had the modules evaluated by the Maryland Department of Information Technology for 508 accessibility compliance. Uh, we, see, we received, I chuckle because we received a detailed report of updates. So our work continues um, as the modules will of course continue to grow and develop in time. Also, we want to take into account the relevance of the curricula to the actual practice within the classroom. So we rest on the expertise of our field to share promising practices and applications in their classroom. To this end, uh, we designed a proposal for an upcoming study circles pilot. And I'm gonna shout out Rachel and Gina because actually they provided this wonderful sort of you know, food for thought suggestion. But we are proposing a study circles pilot for the digital literacy framework for learning modules coming FY24. Um, and I have a timeline for, for anyone who, who might like to see how we're sort of envisioning this in the future. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, the Maryland uh, Department of Labor Office of Education and Literacy Services commits itself to growing um, the digital literacy framework learning modules through through the research-based study and collaborative involvement from all of our Title II adult ed program staff. Um, so by way of the study circles, by way of additional contact and feedback and you know, just exchange of information, um, you know, we wanna make sure that this stays as relevant and as timely as possible. And Thinkific, it's, it's very um, easy to amend. And so some of the things that we're gonna be looking for in our in our learning circles, uh, study circles pilot will be, um, you know, how are we how are we giving these to our staff? What are we what are we providing along with the learning modules? How do we enforce that key principle of empowering adult ed instructors and staff to be better equipped um, with disseminating this information to adult learners to impact their digital skills and um, how do we continue to bring the digital literacy framework for Maryland learners to life, adult learners to life, via the learning modules and give it an application? The, that's kind of the key focus for our, 
for our study circles pilot. And so this is our proposed timeline. Um, early June-ish, we're going to solicit volunteers within the adult ed uh, programs in Maryland. We wanna have some information sessions to get the ball rolling and explain exactly what, what, what we have in mind. Um, have a kickoff meeting in 2023 once the fiscal year resumes. Um, get some feedback going, you know, have groups evaluate each of the modules to just again, evaluate the curriculum, evaluate its applications and accessibility. And then uh, by December of 23, have that information to be able to move forward with updates and revisions and, you know, making uh, the modules as, as rich and important as possible. Um, our group composition, we're envisioning uh, a Maryland Department of Labor adult education program specialist as sort of a point person, but then really bringing on two to three uh, adult ed practitioners and leaders from the field to be able to weigh in on, on the best utilization of these modules. 